Hey everybody, and welcome to kind of a different type of episode of Pedal Powered Anthropology. Um, in the next two episodes, I'm going to be going over my videography kit. In this video, I'm going to be talking about sort of the background and my audio equipment. And in the next video, I'm going to be talking about my video and my lighting equipment. When I started Pedal Powered Anthropology, it was with a certain, you know, philosophy in mind. And the idea is that, uh, you know, you can make a lot of really good content probably with stuff that you already have, you know, whether it's the um, point-and-shoot camera that you got for your birthday or whether it's your cell phone, you know, there is a lot of really good equipment that people have that they don't necessarily realize they have. And this approach is partly born out of the notion that everyone should be able to access education, should be able to, you know, be creative to the best of their abilities, regardless of what kind of money you have to invest in it. And it's also kind of born out of necessity, you know, the stuff is expensive. But at the same time, you know, stuff 20, 25 years ago, the hardware of the equipment people were using was nowhere near some of the stuff that, you know, you probably have in your cell phone. You know, the, the capabilities of the stuff that you just have laying around your house that you don't think about. Um, those capabilities far exceed like state-of-the-art stuff 20 years ago. 20 years ago, people were making films that are much better than anything I will ever do, um, could ever hope to do, and to some extent would even be interested in doing. Uh, so with that in mind, I started, you know, making stuff with just my cell phone. I quickly realized that, you know, you're making something good with your cell phone, but it's one source for both audio and video. While you control for the quality of one source, you might be inadvertently but necessarily compromising the quality of the other. So in realizing this, the necessity of you know having uh, separate sources and multiple sources for audio and video, I wound up building up my audio kit to include uh, two digital audio recorders, uh, two lavalier microphones, a shotgun microphone, and what you kind of see here, a USB interface condenser microphone. So breaking that down, the uh, two digital audio recorders I have are the Zoom H1 and the Tascam dr 5 The Zoom H1 is really popular to the point of it being almost, you know, ubiquitous among uh, budget filmmakers and, you know, people who need to record stuff in dynamic conditions out in the field um, or what have you. Uh, the dr 5 is Tascam's equivalent. As far as audio quality, they're both essentially identical. Um, the zoom, as you can see, is a little bit smaller. The Tascam, it's a bit heavier, a bit bigger. It feels a bit more rugged, but I know for a fact that this guy is very durable. Um, I had an interview subject. I was using this as a room microphone. I had the interview subject accidentally kick it across the room and hit the wall. Um, I've never had a single problem with this. Um, both of these, same sound quality, uh, same capabilities, really. Um, it's just a matter of the interface, where the zoom sort of has different buttons um, on the side that, that let you toggle through the most likely settings you're going to use. The task cam has this dial button thing that um, gives you a really intuitive interface. However, sometimes you want to mic things. So I also got two entry-level lavalier microphones. Lavalier because they, you know, they, they go anywhere. They're super compact. They're as small as a pair of earbuds, if not slightly smaller. So two that I have are the Sony ECM CS3 and ECM CS10. They're both entry level, however um, the ECM CS3 is dynamic, the CS10 is condenser, which right about now you're going to see more or less what that means popping up on the screen. As far as I'm concerned, the CS3 is a dynamic mic, it basically listens to everything going on around it, it'll pick up all of the sounds. So if you have multiple sound sources, if your subject is changing directions, um, if you're in sort of dynamic conditions, you want a dynamic microphone. That's not what dynamic means, it refers to how the sound is generated, but it's sort of a good rule of thumb. However, with the condenser microphone, um, it's directional. So you know, if, you, if you're speaking directly into it, it's sort of ignoring the stuff going on behind it. So if you want really, really controlled, um, 
interviews, you know, maybe you're interviewing somebody in a noisy cafeteria, there's a lot of background noise, you want to ignore the majority of that background noise and really just get very good, clear audio of your interview subject, uh, condenser is the way to go. Sometimes you really want to get specific and that's what the shotgun mic is for. Um, it's pretty much just right here is what's recording the audio. Um, so if there's a real lot of background noise, uh, this is the type of stuff that like news broadcasts will use, um, where you point it at something and it's very much getting just that person. Going beyond that though, uh, I wanted even more control. I started realizing at the end of Pedal for Pongo that using a digital audio recorder for studio type sound recording, um, it introduced variables that it didn't need to be there. Um, you know, if I'm holding it like this, if I'm holding it like this, if I'm sitting like this, if I'm sitting like this, um, the sound reflects and picks up differently. It all sounds like me, but the tonal qualities were all kind of different. So I just wanted to control for that. So I wound up getting the Marantz Pod Pack 1. Um, it's super cheap, super well constructed. Um, it's this microphone and this broadcast boom arm which at the price point is like unheard of to have a boom arm. A boom arm in and of itself can cost more than this entire kit cost. And I've, I've seen, I watched a few reviews of it. I've seen people talk into it, seen people sing into it, um, play acoustic, play electric, play distorted electric. It all gives very excellent uh, sound reproduction. The good thing about the condenser microphone in this situation is that, you know, it's very controlled. It's listening to me right here. Uh, I'm recording in my bedroom, which serves as my home studio. Um, I live on a pretty kid-infested street. Um, I have roosters. Um, I have dogs. So there's always a lot of background noise. And while I'm recording, I don't want to have to really worry about the roosters in the background. I don't worry. I want to have to worry about a kid screaming. Um, you don't want to have to deal with Pop Goes the Weasel playing for 47 minutes while every kid in the neighborhood is going to the ice cream truck. So it's very directed sound, very crisp sound, very clear sound, it's what you're hearing right now. But in addition to that microphone, I got this this here pop guard, which it just, you know, it cuts off those plosive sounds um, and just, you know, controls and makes for a cleaner type recording. So bottom line, um, if I'm, you know, out riding on my bike, you're hearing the ECM CS3 recording. If I'm recording somebody sitting quietly, not moving around, I'm using the ECM CS10 uh, condenser mic. Um, if somebody's standing up and walking around and moving and there's any chance really that the mic can get jostled and that directionality can change, I'll stick with the dynamic mic. That's all for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about the different cameras that I use, what really what application they're good for, and um, also talk a bit about my light kit and um, you know how that's worked out carrying it around on a bike and how I've tailored that to the specific needs of pedal-powered anthropology.